This is a super beginner friendly tutorial and I'm going to show you a very simple example of writing a very simple test. Then I'm going to give you a bit more by showing you what passing and failing tests look like and how to debug them with PyTest. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you like and subscribe and make sure you tap the bell icon so you get notified as soon as I post more Python video tutorials like this. With that said, let's get started. Right, so I'm going to kick off by creating a very simple file. And in this file, we're going to have our code and our test. Now I'm going to call this main.py. But by the way, if you're writing an application for production, what you would do is you'd have all of your test files in a dedicated directory, usually called tests. This way, not only will you know where all the tests are for your project, but another developer coming onto your project will be able to find them easily too. With that said, I'm going to kick off with a very simple example where I'm going to create a function called add. And as you can probably expect, this function is going to add two numbers, x and y. So what we'll do is we'll have res is equal to x plus y, and then it's just going to return the result. Now I'm going to try and mix some best practices and conventions in with this. So I'm going to start off by showing you a very basic example of PyTest in action, but then we're going to start to progress and I'm going to introduce some sort of patterns and conventions that give you a better idea of how you should be writing tests in Python. With that said, I'm going to create a function called test add. And as you can probably expect, all it's going to do is it's going to test the result of adding two numbers, right? So we're going to actually use this function here. So in the testing world, you have this notion of assertion. Assertion usually is indicated by the keyword assert. And the idea is that you want to assert, in other words, check or validate something is correct. So in the case of this function, we want to assert that adding two numbers that we choose actually gives us back the result that we expect. So for example, if I was to call assert add three and four, we expect that the result of calling this function, which again adds two numbers, and this in this case, we're adding three and four, it's going to return back seven, right? Because we know that three plus four is equal to seven. Now, what you could do is you could create a result variable and we could just instead have three and four here. And then what we could then do is we can assert that the result, which is the variable uh, that we've assigned. And in this case, we're calling the same function that adds three and four. We're just asserting the result that comes back is equal to seven. The underlying point is assert allows you to check um, if something, or in this case, the result of the variable is equal to the value that you expect. Now let's give this a run. So the first thing you need to do is install PyTest. On all you have to do is type pip install PyTest. And that will install PyTest globally in this case. Of course, if you're using a virtual environment, it will install it within the virtual environment. And then to run this, all you have to do is type PyTest and then main.py, which is basically the file that houses your tests. Again, I mentioned that if you are deploying this to production or you're, you know, you're working on an application uh, that's going to be going into production, ideally you want to put all your tests in a specific directory, in which case you can just pass the directory here. When I tap enter, what this will do is it will run the test. And as you can see, it will show it here down below. So it will say main.py. There was one test found as indicated by the dot. Um, and this green dot indicates that the test has passed and you also get some um, a log for uh, a log here. So you have one passed in uh, zero seconds. So it's a pretty quick test. Now, one other thing that you can do is run this with the V flag. And the reason why that's good is because if I tap enter, what you will see is you'll see the file which contains the test and it'll show you the test that was run. So it's, you know, it's much clearer. And then on the right hand side, it will tell you the status. So in this case, it's passed and it's in caps, unlike before, where you just had a green dot, which might be difficult to see. And then it'll tell you below the, the same thing as it did before. Now that we've gone through a very simple example of a passing test, I want to show you what happens when a test fails and how you can manage that and debug that. So all we're going to do to get this test to fail is change this seven here. We'll change it to 10, for example. So we know that again, uh, adding, you know, three and four together gives you back seven. And in this case, we're going to assert that the result that comes back is equal to 10. And we know that's going to be wrong. So that's going to, that should raise some sort of error. The test should fail, right? That's what we expect. So if I come down below here and run it again with a V flag, as you can tell here, uh, let's just go through this. What you have is if you scroll uh, up above, you'll see that uh, again, it will show you the file. It'll show you the name of the test. And in this case, it says failed right in red and it's uppercase. And then what we'll do is it will give you a handy log of the test that's failed. So in this case, it will show you the code and then it will say uh, exactly at which line that it's failed. So here, for example, it will show you the line of code uh, that caused the failure. In this case, here you see result 
uh, is equal to 10. So that's the code that we wrote. The nice thing that PyTest does is it evaluates your line of code and it turns it into raw values. And that's quite handy because as you can see below, here it's showing assert seven is equals to uh, equal to 10. And in this case, what it's done is it's taken the value of the result variable, right? The result is actually equal to seven. And so it evaluates it down below. So it says asserting that seven um, is equal to 10. And that's quite handy because this is really easy for debugging. You know, of course, that's, you know, incorrect. And it shows you uh, exactly what PyTest understood and what the code did. Um, and that just makes it easier for you to then go back to your line of code and make uh, the changes that are necessary. One thing that I like to do is have a breakpoint trigger when a test fails. And that's quite handy for me on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm debugging because it allows me to get an interactive shell into my failing test. So let's see that in action. All you have to do is type the same thing, but this time I'm gonna do pytest main.py. And then what I'll do is give it a dash dash PDB. PDB, of course, we know is the debugger in Python. And if you run it with this flag, so you can pass it to PyTest directly. If I tap enter, what this will do is, as you can see, and I'm just going to make this a bit bigger in case it's uh, difficult to see. Um, what this will do is um, it will give you a debugging shell, an interactive shell into the test that is failing, right? So literally, PyTest has been like really cool here to be able to give us uh, the line of code at which uh, the test is failing, but also give us a shell into that. So I can actually pen into the variable. So in this case, you know, I see that result is equal to 10. That's what we're asserting. So I can type result. And I can see actually the result is equal to seven and that's fantastic. And that's one of the really cool things about being in this interactive shell because you can actually run the code that you see. Maybe for example, I wanna, you know, I'm looking at this add function and maybe it, I might not trust that the add function works. So let's type add 110. And I can see, okay, well, the add function works. So, you know, this is just helpful when it comes to debugging because now you're inside the test. You can run the, uh, you know, different snippets of code to understand or figure out exactly where the failure is. Say, for example, you're at this point, And again, say we have a much longer test, uh, with, you know, that has several lines of code. If, for example, you know, we look at this and we're like, okay, we understand why it's failed. Now I just want to exit this shell. All you have to do, you can either do control C or you can type C and tap enter. And that will, a C stands for continue. And that will just continue to the end of the test. So it, you know, it will break uh, the uh, interactive shell and it will just move through um, and continue with the test. Now you have a good idea of how to write a test in Python and you know what a passing and failing test looks like and how to debug it. What we want to do now is show you how you can write tests that captures errors raise in your python program as you build out your python programs errors slash exceptions become more and more important and what you want to do is make sure that you have some tests in place that ensure those exceptions are raised appropriately so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep it simple by defining a very simple function and what we'll do is we'll just define it below actually here we'll call it f and this function it's going to raise a, a system exit exception so i'll do system exit and this is an exception in python which is going to cause the program to, uh, to stop running and in this case i'm going to keep it very simple of course you're not going to have code like this but the idea is if you have a function where you raise an exception um, you want to make sure you write a test that captures that or ensures that exception is being raised so what i'm going to do down below here is i'm going to get rid of this and we're going to write test f test underscore f raises system exit exception right and you're probably wondering why this test name is so long and the reason why is because it's very clear and it follows a particular convention so with this you can't actually use something like assert because asserts are usually used to compare or assert that a function returns back a specific value in this case you want to be, be able to sort of say to pytest hey i want to check that this function raises an exception and there is a way you can do that and the way you do that is you use a context manager essentially you type in with pytest dot raises and then here you define the exception uh, that you're expecting the function to raise right and in this case i'm going to pass in system exit because that's the name of the exception and then here you put a colon and then at this point is basically the code that you expect to raise the system exit expect, uh, exception. And in this case, it's this function here. So all I have to do is type or call the function. And then this will essentially uh, is saying to PyTest that when this function is called, we expect this to raise the system exit 
exception. Now, of course, your case might be a bit more complex. You might have a function that takes parameters and it will only raise an exception based on the parameters that have been passed in. For example, maybe you're dividing by zero and you want to check that that raises a specific exception. So of course you'd need to have uh, the, the parameters in place. But in this case, again, we're keeping the example very simple. Um, but the point is that you can have, you know, more lines of code here. And essentially if all of those code or the, those lines of code come together to raise this exception, um, we're going to capture it in the test. And that's the main thing. Now, one more thing you need to do here is you need to import PyTest because now we're using one of PyTest's uh, handy functions. We're calling PyTest.Raises. And now if I give this a run, if I type PyTest main.py and I'm gonna uh, add the V flag just so we can see exactly what's going on. I tap enter. Here you can see that the uh, test that we wrote uh, where we expected the system exit exception to be raised has passed. And that's exactly what we expect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this test. So what I'm gonna do is instead of raising exception, I'm just gonna have it return one, right? And so we accept or expect that uh, this will uh, not pass and it will fail. And in this case, you see this error message here after we've run it saying failed. It did not raise this system as an exception. And that's exactly what we expected. Right, so I'm going to leave it there. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more Python videos like this. And of course, let me know in the comments below if you want to see more about what PyTest has to offer. Until then, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.